So with our form all set up, let's now use it to actually create new cabins. And just like before, let's start by creating that function right here in our services. So to interact with our Superbase API. And so this one, let's call it create cabin. And this one, what it needs as an input, as always, is a new cabin object. Okay, now let's come here again. And since we are already here on this policies page, let's again create a new policy so that for now all users can create new cabins. So select again this first one here and then let's do one for insert. So enable, well, let's call it create. It's a bit of a more traditional name. And here we need to then write some expression. Let's just write true here. Let's save it. And since we are already here, let's immediately also create one for the last action, which is to update. So enable update access for all users. And then here just write true. All right. And again, later we will make all of them here only possible for authenticated users. But anyway, now let's come to our API docs again, select our cabins so that we can now grab the code to create new cabins. So we could of course always read also the documentation of, uh, of the Superbase library, but it's of course a bit easier to just grab it from here. So let's copy that and paste that here. So let's then also grab the same thing as here before. So cabin could not be created in case there was some error. So here what's happening this time is again that the cabins are selected but this time, instead of deleting or of just selecting, we will insert. So here we need to basically pass in an array and then an object where we have some value for all of the columns. And in our case, that is simply going to be the new cabin. So new cabin. And the reason why this is going to work is that the fields, so the field names that we have here are exactly the ones that we have in the table. So we have the regular price. And so that's this one with this name. We have the discount. So right here, we have the description. We have the image later on. And yeah, the name also. So this one right here. And so that's the reason why then here this data has exactly the shape of the data that we need to pass in here into Superbase when we want to create a new cabin. All right, and so that's the reason why here all we need to do is to pass in this object into the array. But don't forget that array right there. Okay, so we already have our function. We have the row level security policy uh, enabled. So that's very important. And so now we are ready to use again a mutation. So a React query mutation. So let's do that. Maybe here at the very top. And so we will call again use mutation because here we are going to change, of course, the cabin data. And so whenever we change something, just like the leading in the previous lecture, or creating a new row like we are going to do now. So this will then return us an object with the mutate function and also the is loading state. And then here, remember, we need to pass in the mutate function. So mutation function. And so this is going to be create cabin. And again, it could also be like this. 
so like new cabin and then call it with that like this but this is also not really necessary so it's exactly the same thing but anyway now let's also immediately declare the on success handler and so here what's going to happen is that we will again create a new toast so that's toast dot success and then new cabin successfully created and then we need to again also invalidate our queries and the reason for that again is that so right after submitting the form and so right when the new cabin has been created so that it appears then in the UI. So basically whenever this mutation here happens we will then want to invalidate the cabins query again so that this component here will then basically refetch the cabins data. And so then when the state here changes it will again re-render this table. So just looking at that again this cabins state here is nothing magical. I mean it is behind the scenes going to be just react state in the end. And so whenever some new data is fetched by react query whenever that state updates then as always like we have been learning throughout the entire course the component will re-render. So just wanted to make that crystal clear so that what happens is not something completely magical. But anyway for that we need to again get our query client. So use query client and then here let's do query client dot invalidate queries where the query key is again that array and then cabins and then it's always a good idea to handle errors and react query makes this just so easy. So here let's then say toast dot error and then error dot message. Okay and so with this let's now then use the mutate function and the is loading state. So here it's actually really really simple. All we have to do is to call mutate with or data and that's actually going to be it. So for now we will just assume that we don't have any errors in the form so that no fields are empty and that all the data actually makes sense. Now one other thing that we can do here on success is to also close the form or well actually we don't have that state variable here and of course we could pass this down into this component but let's not do that because this is just temporary anyway. But what we can do is to also here manually reset the form. So right after the form has been submitted let's also reset it so to empty all the fields and we can do that by getting here the reset function also from use form. So then uh, we need to move this up here because we now want to use this function later which is right here. So again also after the success we want to then just call the reset function. Now you might be wondering why we are not simply doing all that right here in the on submit handler. Well the reason for that is that first of all here we are really only doing this if the mutation was successful. So only if really a new cabin has been added and really only after the fact not immediately which is what would happen here. Also it's really nice to keep all this code here outside of the event handler. So just encapsulate it right here where the mutation is already happening anyway because this stuff is in a way really related to that mutation. So we want to keep it here really close. And so then the on submit handler is just really nice and clean. All right. And now let's use that is loading state maybe just to disable this button. 
So disabled, and then, and well, let's actually change it again here. So the name. So before we changed it to is deleting, here let's just change it to is creating. So is creating like this. And with this, we should be good to go. So let's reload here. And so let's test this. The photo we will leave empty. And beautiful. So that worked and it feels a bit like magic, doesn't it? So this is now actually adding a real cabin to a real database on our server using an API and all using the power of two libraries really. So of React hook form, but even more importantly, of course, React query. Great. Now, what happens if we just try to submit this without any validation? So we could just click here and then, well, apparently we get some error. So what do we get here? Invalid input syntax for something. So something is wrong here on the server, but of course we shouldn't even allow to submit this form if everything is empty here. So maybe we need something here. Maybe then it will work. So I just want to demonstrate to you. Well, but yeah, apparently not. So there's already some validation happening here on the API level. But as I was saying, we want to prevent from a form like this to even be submitted. And we also want to really validate, for example, if these here are numbers. And so let's move on to the next video where we will learn how to do that with React hook form.